Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm in joy and I'm honored to have one of my close friends and one of my favorite people in sports broadcasting join us today. JP, John Morosi, how are you doing, buddy, first and foremost? Ian, I'm doing great, my friend. Great to be on the air with you and, and thanks for the kind words, too kind as you always are. And, and thanks, as always, for all the great soccer and baseball conversations we've had. I love it. Well, listen, first and foremost, I know your wife has been working in and out of the hospital. How are the family doing and how difficult has it been for you, obviously, as a sports broadcaster during this time? Yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah, we've, we've been doing well here in Michigan. Uh, my wife, I'm so proud of her. She's an internal medicine doctor uh, at University of Michigan and the VA hospital here as well. So she's been very busy, uh, goes back and forth between those two hospitals, depending on the month. And we're doing well so far. We have some different rules in place at the house. We have three kids, and they, they know now not to go run and hug mom as soon as she walks in the door because we have a different protocol where she's got to make sure that she's got all of her uh, health care clothes, go right to the, to the washing machine just to be healthy and, and wash hands and all that stuff. So a lot of the rules uh, the girls have gotten accustomed to uh, here at the house, and so they're, they're aware of it. And, and for my wife, really, and it's just been a matter of supporting her as best we can. And, and I think all of us that are going through this, and we're all, we all have different jobs as citizens right now. Uh, we all kind of strike that balance between how much do we talk about the, the fight against COVID-19, how much do we let our lives breathe a little bit and, and find other yeah. things to talk about. So honestly, as, as a husband and a father, a lot of it's just about trying to read the temperature of the room, so to speak. Is it a time to, to ask about work and how things are going and, and where do we support there? Or also do we want to talk about something totally different and, and have some different conversations? So she's been doing great. And, and as you mentioned, the, the, the key thing right now is for me to support her Sports will come back. I'm confident of that. But for now, I think my most important jobs are as a husband and a father and as a citizen here at, here at home as well. Well, you're doing a great job of that. I, I can almost guarantee it knowing you as a person. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Let's Thank get you. to it. The people want to know, what about baseball? When are we going to see baseball again? What are you hearing? And what's your thought about this overall process going through the suspension? And when are we going to see it again? Ian, well, great questions. I think that we'll know more in the next couple of weeks. And I, I, right now, I'm confident, uh, confident maybe too strong a little bit. I, I'm very optimistic, perhaps is a better way to say it, that we'll see baseball this year. That seems to be a, a gathering opinion right now. I always want to be a little cautious. Again, part of that's probably being married to a doctor who, when I get really excited about things, she'll try to have, have me have that perspective. John, let's, let's make sure we're taking our steps properly as we should and still maintain physical distancing. However, I, I am optimistic now. And I think a lot of different ideas have been reported on publicly here in the last uh, couple of weeks, either the all Arizona plan, Arizona, Florida, or Arizona, Texas, and Florida, whatever it ends up being. But yeah. I, I think the key thing is that as, as conversations continue, I, I do get a sense that they're thinking about a lot of different creative solutions at the MLB level. And then eventually it's going to come to a time where MLB discusses things with the relevant public health officials, uh, with the government officials, and then certainly the players union to make sure they can find a way to come together on, on what the overall salary structure looks like the revenues so there's a lot of, it's a very dynamic situation as you know Ian soccer leagues around the world and other pro sports leagues here in the states but I'm I'm I would say more optimistic now than I was two weeks ago and I do I do have an optimism that there will be a, a window to play uh is it June is it July is it before then who knows but I do think at some point in time this summer Ian we're going to see baseball again I speak to a lot of athletes. I've spoken to a lot of sports broadcasters during this break, but now I'm speaking to a legend. And I've got to ask you, <laughs> what do you miss most about baseball? Like, what is it that's just, you wake up every day and you just, oh, just miss it. Yeah, it's a great question, Ian. I, I, miss, I miss the people, the connections. I'm getting a little emotional thinking about it. Just when I walk into the ballpark, uh, you know, baseball has such a great family atmosphere, always has for me, where you walk into a clubhouse and, you're hearing different languages around you, different cultures represented there. And, and to me, every time I walk into a clubhouse and I have two or three or four great conversations that day, with maybe it's a manager or a coach or a player, and you just understand something about the journey that that player has had to get to that point and, and be a major league player. And, and that proximity of conversation, uh, I think just coming from a family that's always been very storytelling based and, and conversational, that, that human connection, I, I, I miss it the most right now, Ian, and I also worry about, like we all do, what are the rules going to be like in the future? Because I, th those are the parts of the game that I really love so much of the conversations. Yes, I love the game. The, the nine innings of baseball are special. 
but it's the conversations around it that I hope we just we don't lose. And obviously, we have to listen to the rules and, and follow whatever those guidelines are. But I think that, to me, is what I miss the most. And, and just those, those curious conversations that are really organic about, hey, how'd you get here? And, and how did you fulfill your dream? And I think probably now, Ian, the question is going to be, how did you get through this? Who are the people that helped you through this journey? And, and I think whenever we get back, I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Uh, what will those conversations be like about what brought you through? How did you keep right. yourself mentally sharp? Because as you know, the mental side is just as important right now as the physical. Yeah, I think there's going to be a new appreciation from many people, not just sports broadcasters. I think supporters, fans in general, you know, the players themselves, there's going to be a brand new appreciation for their life that once was, but also the new life that is coming. Speaking of other sports, you're a huge soccer fan. And, and that's how we got to know each other, crossing paths in Fox Studios. What got you into soccer? I mean, why do you love it so much? <laughs> it's a great question, Ian. I think, you know, growing up, I certainly was more of a baseball fan, but soccer has pulled me in so much as, as I've gotten older. I love the international aspect of it. I love the storytelling aspect of it. Uh, how, uh, and, and you've shared so many stories of your experience of playing in different countries. And I love learning about the world through sports. Sports tells you when you walk into a new place or a new conversation to learn about someone else's culture or sport or country. If you ask those questions about their sport, pretty soon after two minutes, your friends, and, and that unfamiliarity has given way to a friendship. And I think soccer does that, Ian, probably better than any sport in the world because of the way you unify things. And I, I think back to 2010 uh, and the Landon Donovan goal to get the U.S. into the, uh, through the group play in the World Cup. And, and that was one of the first moments where I felt where if you were not watching soccer, you were out of the conversation because that's all we were talking about was that goal, what happened. All those watch parties, that incredible video I've watched it a million times of, of all around the country – people gathering and watching that game. And so those, to me, Ian, it's those shared experiences that, that pulled me in. And then you learn the different backstories and, and you were so generous in, in sharing your knowledge of German soccer with me to, to be able to go to Berlin, uh, incredible trip I took in October to tell the story of Union Berlin and Erzo Berlin that you helped me with so much. And so just learning those stories and then getting a chance to see how we as Americans become so curious about the European game just as many European fans have fallen in love with American baseball or, or American football or basketball over the years. It's just, it's a really cool cross conversation. I, it was really fun in, in September. I was, I was in New York for baseball and I saw Patrick Owomoyello at a, at a, a baseball game. In fact, with all the BVB gear for Borussia Dortmund and, and what a great club they've got now with Gio Reyna, a young uh, American player, of course, the son of Claudio Reyna. So really cool just to see those connections across the generations. And, uh, but through, your, through conversations with you, Ian, you pulled me in and made me even more of a soccer person than I was even five years ago. So then who's your team? I mean, if we're talking soccer in general, I know you love Italia. I know you si. love the national team. Certo, certo, certo. But who is your <laughs> team? Which is your club team? <laughs> See, uh, la mia squadra preferita è Roma, Roma, certo Roma. So Roma, uh, Roma, certo, certo, bravissimo club, uh, eh, Francesco Totti. I have actually a kit in my house uh, signed by Francesco Totti, one of the great uh, treasure possessions that we have here. So I uh, think about Italy's triumph in the World Cup in 06. So I've got, in that respect, Ian, two teams. So the U.S. and Italy, when they play, I just, I just sit there and just, and just cry, basically, because you're not quite sure what to do. You've got your two teams playing, so you just kind of cry your way through it. But uh, I, I really, I, I would say for me, Roma for sure in, in Italy. And then when I go around Europe, because I've got other, you know, I'm, I'm a quarter German as well. I'm a quarter Polish. So I've got all different heritage. Uh, I, I look uh, in, in the case of Germany, I, I, because there have been so many American players playing there, I tend to follow wherever the American players are in the Bundesliga, certainly Tyler Adams and Weston McKinney. And you think about Gio Reyna and, and Weston McKinney playing in those Riviera derbies in the future, potentially there with Schalke and, and BBB. So I would say my heritage in, in Germany comes from that Westfalen area. So I would say more BBB for me than anything else, uh, just because of the geography. And, and certainly they've had Pulisic and now they have Reyna. So it, it's a, there's a connection there. It's a very exciting team. Uh, with, with Favre as the coach and a lot of young talent there. So I think BVB kind of has pulled me in right now as, as being my, my favorite club in Germany. So I would say BVB in Germany, Rome in Italy. Uh, I would say uh, in, in Warsaw, certainly the, the, the main club there as well, in Legia. So I, I try to, you know, pick those teams that, uh, that they really connect with my family's heritage and then just watch those that really uh, attract me just with their style of play. John Morosi, what can I say? Your knowledge of sports, your passion for sports <laughs> is just there for all to see. Thank you so much for joining us today.